Back here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, now looking at the holdout situation. All of these are getting knocked off of the board very quickly, right? We had Brandon Ayuk now off of the board. He signs an extension with the 49ers. Then we have Trent Williams just restructuring his current contract just today. That news broke today, so that's another one off of the board. CD Lamb was knocked off a while ago, and now... We're still stuck on Hassan Reddick. We're still stuck on this situation with the New York Jets because it's been weeks since we last heard about anything regarding Reddick and a potential new contract. Um, still a debate of showing up versus um, showing up before or showing up after he gets that money, right? That still seems to be the problem. Hassan doesn't want to step foot in the facility without getting his money. The Jets don't want to give him that money until you know, he shows any sort of commitment and just any sort of willingness to be there without that money. Um, So that's where we are. We are still at this standstill between the two sides. Hassan Reddick has been holding out throughout the entire offseason, not just training camp after he was traded back in the beginnings of of April, excuse me. So it's been going on for a while. Nothing has really moved. We've just heard a lot of back and forth. The uh, Hassan Reddick camp and obviously the player have requested a trade at this point which almost you would think throw a wrench in this whole operation but the Jets and their general manager Joe Douglas have doubled down and have said that they're not going to trade or explore any sort of situation of releasing or trading Hassan Reddick so while Reddick requested a trade again it doesn't really move anything so we're still just stuck at where we are nobody moving until the other person decides to cave. And now we have another update from SNY's Connor Hughes, who reported that uh, this is expected and could potentially carry into the regular season if both sides are very reluctant and very stubborn to show any sort of progression in this situation. Connor Hughes mentioned that uh, this is so uncertain right now where it stands that Hassan Reddick could report in the next 24 hours or... He could just continue to hold out and just not show up at all. It's very much right there teetering on the brink of being resolved in a matter of just a day, like he said, or just continuing for nothing to happen. So reinforcing what I said before, Hughes also cited a bunch of sources close to Hassan Reddick saying that he's willing to sit out this entire year if he has to, which isn't great for the Jets, right? And uh, I'm going to get into that a little bit later in this segment. But um, again, General Manager Joe Douglas has no intention of trading or cutting Hassan Reddick at this time. And Connor Hughes said in his next statement that the the Jets insist they're fine without him. They're fine without Hassan Reddick. Reddick says he's willing to set out the entire year. Once it's clear that Reddick isn't a luxury but a necessity, he and his representatives can demand the contract that he desires. And that's going to be the next projected step in this uh, in this saga that has turned out between Reddick and the Jets, right? If we're really committing into going into the regular season, the next sort of checkpoint milestone in this will be when either the Jets realize they don't necessarily need Hassan Reddick, they're fine without him like they are like they believe right now because they do have a great defense obviously already but adding Hassan I think takes it to another level obviously so they are willing to go out there with the pieces that they have right now and whether or not this point ever comes in the regular season where um, maybe you don't hope that it happens maybe somebody gets injured or they are just struggling facing opposing offenses on their front they realize that they don't have enough depth do they go to Hassan Reddick and in Connor Hughes's statement you know realize that he isn't a luxury but a necessity for them to really get to their objectives in 2024 um or does Hassan Reddick just decide to come back because they keep finding him each and every day each and every week that he is not there Who's going to cave first? That's going to be the next step in this progression. Once I do expect it to carry into the regular season, um, who you know comes to the realization first basically is going to be huge in this in this you know entire situation. 
potentially um, missing out on that first game, obviously, for Hassan Reddick, which isn't great for the Jets and their chances because Trent Williams, like I said before, he's figured out his contract with the 49ers. He's most likely going to be out there on Monday alongside Brandon Ayuk. So the 49ers have nothing to worry about. Yeah, they were preparing for any possibility that either of those players weren't going to be there, but they've obviously, you know, figured everything out. And now the 49ers can just focus on just football. And realistically, it gets to a point now where you look at this situation and how it's kind of similar to the Jamar Chase situation and him holding in as well, right? Because those are the two main ones left at this point in time. Those are the only two situations that the teams have let carry out at this late of the, the offseason, right? Unless I'm missing one, which I don't think I am. Just trying to remember if I'm missing any. I don't think I am. Um, regardless, these are two of the biggest ones left at this point of the offseason. And if you're trying to compare them, obviously I think Jamar would be more important to the Cincinnati Bengals at this point in time because when you know Connor Hughes mentions that the Jets might come to a realization that Hassan Reddick might be a luxury versus a necessity there's no question that the Bengals need Jamar Chase right they need him he is a necessity there's no need to head into the regular season to figure that out they already know that right realistically on the field Jamar Chase is more of a need for the Cincinnati Bengals because they're not going to go anywhere remotely close to winning the division, playoffs, or anything like that um, without Jamar Chase. But the Jets are capable of getting there because their most important piece is going to be Aaron Rodgers, and he is healthy. He is ready to go for Monday. So it's not the same level there, but the point I wanted to touch on before on the Jets just realizing that just give him the contract basically at this point in simplest terms for uh, for Hassan Reddick for a couple reasons or just the, the main reason being that I think it really says a lot about the Jets and their intentions this year whether or not they figured this out before the regular season right I think taking everything into account the long journey that the Jets have survived through getting up until this point right a lot of treacherous awful years, bad quarterback play, you draft Sauce Gardner, you draft Brees Hall, you bring in Garrett Wilson, this defense is coming along, this offense is looking great, you just need the quarterback, you manage to go get Aaron Rodgers, right, he gets hurt, that year's thrown out, that's in the garbage last year, now everything is here in place for you to win right now, you've stayed put with this project, you've invested a lot in it, and now you have a chance to potentially make it even better and really commit to this short-term project that you've been building on for the last like five, six years. For the Jets to get to the final step now and be right there with agreeing this extension with Hassan Reddick and now you decide now to decide to reconsider everything, maybe think that, you know what, we might be better off. Let's hold out and see where we are in three or four weeks or something like that in the regular season. You can't you can't have that approach when you're so close to really committing to this short-term project um, because that's what it is at the end of the day because Aaron Rodgers, he's not here for five, six years. He's going to be here for the next two, two, three years. So that gives you, I think, a good window to extend Hassan Reddick three years with an option in that fourth year or something like that or a max of three years or something like that to commit and go all into this project, right? Again, that you've just been building over the last six to five years to get to this final step and really solidify yourself as buying in. You're not hesitating. You're really committing to this project and sending it and just extending Hassan Reddick before the season starts. I think that would send such a reaffirming message to not only the Jets fans, but everybody in the NFL that the Jets are not playing around, that they're really going at it this year to try and change the narrative around this team, right? And have some prosperous years here with Aaron Rodgers. But to get to this final step again, I'll say it, is confusing and it's just like unnecessary for how much work they've done to get to this point. Just give the man his contract. 
he's going to make this team better. Um, they might not need him right off of the bat necessarily, but there's no doubt that it's going to make them better. And if you have that opportunity just sitting there waiting for you to make a move, I don't know how you couldn't do it if you're the Jets trying to just erase this negative energy that you've had around your organization for the longest times. Everything's going great for you right now. New O-line, Mike Williams comes in. Um, you already have great young studs on your team already. Now you have the quarterback. Just make that final move and really commit to this plan. And there's no reason to have this man hold out the entire year. It doesn't have to get to that. I think the Jets should just commit to it and really just go all in on this year because they're just standing in their own way without extending Hassan Reddick, right? If you have such a luxury and almost a necessity sitting there, you're just standing in your own way at this point, knowing that you can get better, but you just decide not to for whatever reason. I think that's something that could come back and bite the Jets later on in the year where depth is going to be such a huge thing. But hopefully they figure it out. You know, I was going to say the deadline is something like tomorrow or Thursday, but the way that this has gone, I don't really expect that to be resolved. So I'm going to predict that this goes into the regular season, but it should not carry on any further than week two or week three at the most if the Jets are serious about being contenders this year. That's just how I feel about it. I don't know how you don't use Hassan Reddick if he's just on your team just sitting there, but hopefully... The Jets come to their senses a little bit here and extend him the sooner rather than uh, than later, obviously. But that is that segment. We have one more to get to on today's show, just predicting the final standings in the AFC East between the Patriots, the Bills, the Jets, just talked about them, and the uh, Miami Dolphins. So we're going to get to that right after this break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 